we're down two wins in the, the last three. How's the mood in the camp? It must be pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was until we trained Tuesday and I didn't think they were applying themselves and I changed the mood pretty quickly. So, no, they're, they're good, they're fine. Um, everyone's um, working through the week. You know, uh, our week is tough. It's not a tiptoe around everyone. It's a, it's a tough week and they're, they're working through it and they know Thursday's generally quite a tough day. So, I bet they'll be <laughs> delighted to see me in a bit. <laughs> And in terms of, of your squad, any new injury concerns? Are we potentially going to see Jack Robinson involved this weekend? No, I think I think Jack will be from um, the following week. I think Jack will be back involved. Um, he's still uh, in Middlesbrough at the minute. We're expecting him back Monday. Uh, we had a few concerns with uh, Gorman's a concern. Um, uh, I've got his name there. Tom Knowles is a concern. Sorry, Tom. Uh, yeah, so I kind of couple of little niggly ones really from the from the three games in, in, in a short space of time. Um, but we'll we'll kind of leave that as late as possible. I wouldn't have thought any of them would train um, today, maybe even not tomorrow, but that's okay. And we'll just look at maybe some changes and some alternatives, maybe a shape change and uh, yeah just carry on preparing as we normally do. And you said to me on uh, Saturday that you were sort of going to look ahead to, to Stockport in the next week, but are you going to be sort of forced into the change in shape because of those niggling? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer that you take your best equipped eleven individuals and you put them in as round a shape hole as possible. Um, and we've, you know, one of the big problems against Kings Lynn was that we'd, we'd not had Moss train with us. And that was very hard to do because it was almost blind. Um, but apart from putting Matthew in a square hole, I think that's what we've tried to do throughout, is, is, is go back to putting round pegs around holes, not, not trying to be too clever. Um, so we've, we've played a different system before in the league. Um, and we'll, you know, if we have to change, we'll change again. But we'll change it around the individual rather than, rather than you know, Darren Soul's wish list of philosophical alterations. They've got some big strikers that make yes. the headlines, but actually it's your striker that, that's made the headlines. Right. Are you approaching the game in a more defensive way or are you going to look out to go all out attack? Um, I, I would say neither really. I think I think it's, a, it's about having a balance. I'm not a big believer in you have to play it one way at home, one way away. I don't really get that. I've never, never really have. I think you find your way and you stick to your way yeah, as we as AD knows, over the last two years, plan B, I don't get the, the thing behind a plan B. For a plan B, you'd need two squads, surely. I don't, I don't understand. You'd have to have a completely different group of ingredients to make a completely different product. So, you know, where, where we are, um, we, we barely um, numerically execute plan A. <laughs> so, you know, we just carry on working if the shape changes and players going different sort of spots or areas on the pitch the strategy has to stay the same because that's what we've signed and we've got to try and maximize the the best usage of those individuals um and uh we, we thought we'd kind of get in there obviously injury or suspension will always be the way that it tears that kind of way up um, but we just be open-minded to it i think at the moment uh, there's a there's quite a nice balance uh, between our defensive play and attacking play, and and I think that is purely down to the the athleticism that we've brought to the football club, means that when we do attack, it generally is at a, a quite a, an upbeat pe uh, pace, <clears throat> and so you know, and everyone likes to see speed, and I think that lifts people when you see speed, when you see Wakefield, and you know, Quigley is not a slouch for us, and he's a big guy, but he's no slouch. Uh, and because they're going at such a rate, you know, people kind of generally lift to see that 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 um, phase of play. But we just got to be really balanced. You know, I've, I've said all along, I'm not going to moan about injuries and money and rubbish like that. We're just we're going to run our hardest, which the boys have. That's the only reason why we won the two games because their attitude, their attitude. He was there at Aldershot. Their attitude in that closing stages were after the goal went in was just. 
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, and we just carry on following one game at a time. There's not really a run for us this year. We're not really looking at runs. We just it's got to be a runner one all the time. One, one, next one, next one, next one. So um, a run of one. That's it. Oxymoron, if ever I've heard that. So yeah. And you certainly do bring a certain type of players to this football club. You want those Which hard working players and <laughs> ones that, as you say, do all, do the all the running. The misfits. <laughs> but. Is the, the scenes we saw at Aldershot and at home on Saturday, do you tell the players about those scenes and, and how much they will push them over the line? Because it really oh, I, felt like that connection's really there now. No, it's, it's a, I don't know how it, I don't know how it started um, a couple of years ago. I don't know which game it started at. Aldershot's probably an early one. But when I'm now recruiting players, I show them, I play them that video at Solly Old. Um, I play in the video all the shot, you know, I play in these because it's a real, I asked Jordan Barney how he felt after the game S Saturday, he was like a dog with two and the rest. So um, he, you know, it, it does, it is a special moment and I still get really excited by it and I still very much enjoy it. Um, and, it, and it's kind of starting to happen now all around the ground rather than one end, it's starting to happen now around the sides. And that's brilliant, and, and it gives players great confidence, and it also <coughs> gives them an, an organic motivation to win. And motivation for any manager is the hardest thing to do in over 10 months, because it's day in, day out, it's very intense. You, know, you can only tell this, that story once, you know, to try and lift them and inspire. And, and it's a hard way, but when you have that connection with the supporters, and you know at the end of the game, if we really put ourselves on the line here today, and we get a win, we're gonna have two, three minutes of that ecstatic you, it's like euphoria winning a game of football you hear the whistle and you've won the game it's like a salvation a euphoria of I feel really great about myself for the first time this week <laughs> month year um, and that's what they're experiencing and especially I, I know I made a, a, a quite a blase joke about the misfits but a lot of these lads a lot of these players have never really had a welcomed home and I'm, I'm not talking disrespectfully to any previous clubs in the case of Jordan Barney, he had two clubs last year. At the end of that second spell, that second club, you know, he was told that his services were no longer, you know, required. Then I signed him, and I thought he got quite a bit of a bad rap early on, Jordan, um, from certain sections. But he's now showing everyone what we thought we saw in him, and the committed, all or nothing type performances that he's put in. He's been, he's been exceptional, Jordan. Um, and those moments make someone who's never had a place that's felt real, makes it feel real. It makes it feel like you belong and it makes you feel wanted and it makes you feel like you want to do it again. And I think that's the biggest thing that we wanted to have when I first come is, you know, we're not above anyone, we're football players. It's just our chosen form of trade. We're not better than this person or that industry or that sector. We are just normal people that love playing football and we get paid to do it. And I, and I want to have a connection with the supporters. You know, I saw young Maxi out there on in the, uh, what's that stand called? The screw fit. Yeah. Right, in the screw fit, you know, and seeing him and his face, it makes you feel good about yourself, you know? So they're lovely moments, and I've rambled there, but they are, um, they are really nice moments. And when we talk about last year and how bad it was with our supporters, gee, how good is it with supporters? Yeah, and you speak about a player like Max Hunt, who joined the club last year and has only just been able to, to see Absolutely. the supporters, that must be fantastic for him. And I think that's probably why his performances have, have raised so much. Yeah, I think I think every young player, when they, they get in their early 20s, they have to go through a season of struggle. I really believe that. And I'd like to think I'm pretty well placed when we're talking about the development and pathways of young players. But I think young people have that one season where it's a real struggle. Terry talks about his season he went on loan to Wickham and then he went to Welling and before he comes to Yeovil you know he struggled coming out of Chelsea struggled and I think everyone has that season and because we started recruiting in January a different sort of model of player we knew that that spell would come Morgan Williams has got that to come yet Jordan Barnett's had it you look at the lads that were young and that were here last year that went through all of the 
the horrible things that we went through. Max Hunt had to go for a fractured cheekbone, the loss of a teammate, COVID. I mean, he signed, he, Max Hunt signed on Christmas Eve to play Boxing Day without training with his team last year. We got Wallop 6 1 or whatever it was. He's, so he's had to come through a lot, a lot of obstacles. And what that does, every time you pick yourself up and you get yourself back out there and you put your boots back on, you just add, you just add resilience to your life. And when he goes through a bad period of form again, he'll never go through a period like last year. So we'll always put that in context then. And that's really what experience is, isn't it? Life experience is that you can appropriately contextualise what is going on in that moment. I'm saying to listen. It's fine. So I think he's, you know, a lot of them have gone through those periods. Bradley's definitely gone through that period. Huntley has definitely gone through that period. Barney, you know, knows he's probably still got it to come. So, but when it does... You just attack it and you get through it. And we do get through things. And I know in life, sometimes we we do sort of embellish what is a, kind of a pretty small problem and make it huge. But it's um, it's part of their growing periods. And I think Max has come through. There's certain conditions Max has to abide by during the week. You can ask him later. I'm more than happy for you to ask him to ensure that he is working at a certain level day in, day out. And we've stuck to it. And I'm not going to come off him. And again, like Quigley, I'm quite hard with Max. And because uh, that's the position he plays and that's the responsibility he's got to shoulder. But no, he's been fabulous. Absolutely great to work with as well. And a brilliant, brilliant guy. And one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> freak. <laughs> and just lastly, from, from me, Darren, you seem to really enjoy working with these young players yeah. and even the lone players down Moss, Sunny, Sunny Blue Everton, it's, it's really showing on the pitch and, and off it. Yeah, Dan Moss is literally the most l lowest main maintenance player I've ever worked with. I mean, that guy, I, 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 don't even know, I don't even know if I've spoke to him yet. I mean, he, he just kind of glides in and glides out. No one really sees him. I'd like him to talk a bit more, but... I think Wilkinson, I sat down with Wilkinson to, to reflect on Saturday, on Tuesday, a little group of senior players. And Wilkinson said so to me, he said, every time I look over my shoulder, he's in the right place. It's a pretty decent compliment from a 30-year-old from a to a 20-year-old. So um, he's been, uh, Daniel's been excellent. He's still got, he still can show a little bit more in possession but his nut and bolt of his job, of his defensive trade, is, has been a very high standard. Again, he may go through a period. They all do, so it, it wouldn't surprise me, but um, they're great to work with, very good. Um, they're all desperately ambitious. The, the thing that we have to try and control with young players, and we've not been very good at it over the two years, in my opinion, and that's everyone, crowd, me, teammates is we have to make sure the ambition is focused in a in a team direction rather than in an individual direction because if Tom Knowles for example and this isn't Tom Knowles in any way shape or form if Tom Knowles starts thinking his goal scoring record's more important than the team winning a game we, me and Tom have got a bit of a problem so as long as when it comes to Saturday that everyone knows we play for Yeovil Town Football Club not Darren Soul Football Club or Tom Knowles Football Club, then then I'm okay with that. But no, they've been very enjoyable. But blimey, over ten months, how many more hurdles are there going to be, and runs of peak and trough, and all that rubbish that comes with football. Um, and we just got to keep trying to run hard, be very very organised, and um, have a good attitude. And at the moment, I've got to say they've been, they've shown that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Last season, I remember you made a, a lot of comments about the um, early season number of games you had to play. Yes. And it was it was crazy. Yes. Um, it, it doesn't appear to be quite as frantic this season. No. Uh, are you happy with that? Did you feel that you're going to reap the yeah. benefit of that? I, I, I don't know. if the, the only thing we reap the benefit of is common sense, really, because there are the, the, the least... I know we said we go for a six-week pre-season, I can tell you, it does not matter what you do in pre-season in those six weeks. The first ten games are hell on your body and your mind. And and I think with all the extra stuff that you know lockdowns brought and all the other strains and no fans now there's fans and all of that sort of stuff. 
it would just have been a, a huge, huge demand on, on the football players. And we're not playing in a division where everyone's able to recruit players where they can go and buy two million pound houses, a stone throw from the ground. We're, we're playing in a level where Max Hunt still travels from Chesterfield, Jordan Barnett, Sheffield, Mark Little, Swansea, you know, here, there, everywhere, Josh Staunton, um, Kent, you know, so there's a lot of travel. So uh, it's been, it's definitely been welcomed because we, we get more time to recover. I mean, can you imagine with our 16 at the moment, if we'd have done 10 games, I think we did we do 11 games in 31 days last year? I've got that right, number yeah. in my head. Yeah, we only won one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely remember that one. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, it's just been, I just think it's common sense. And then make October six games rather than four. And make November um, seven games. So there's a progression to people's physical and mental capacities that can actually handle the, the programme. Yeah. It's common sense, isn't it, eh? Yeah. I mean, it really, You'd it, think so, but yeah, it last really, season it didn't appear that way, did no, it? No, no, no. Look, it's always been tough. It's always been tough. Uh, and, you know, I speak to a lot of people, obviously still in the Football League and the Premier League, and the amount of games the EFL teams have had. Uh, it was their Steve Nidu that had their first break, clear week, for nine weeks. Yeah. Nine weeks of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. I mean, talk about flogging, you know? It is flogging, isn't it? I mean, it really is. And then they they wonder why, as soon as you get to that third week or the fourth week of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, people's squads are depleted and managers look like they're <laughs> 10 years older and stuff like that. So, no, it's, it's, been, it's been really good because our team, for example, needs training pitch time. It needs contact time with a training pitch because they're still in, you know, they're still learning each other, they're still learning themselves, um, and 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 the more time we get, the better. So bearing all that in mind, I mean, it's not a bad start. You, I know you're one game behind everybody else, but other other than that, I mean, you, you must be fairly pleased with the the progress. I mean, unfortunately, they yeah. lose the first game, yeah, and that could have perhaps stopped you in your tracks because oh god, we've lost our first game, yeah. but you haven't. Yeah, you, you've two on the trot now, and no, it's absolutely. going well. Absolutely, I mean. Like I said, personally, when I reflect on my own performance last year, I, I moaned about a load of nonsense most of the time, a load of crap, um, and and I'm not going to do it this year because I don't I don't want to live the same year that I did last year. So um, I think it when we lost that game, everyone I, I read so many things, so many things. That's only two wins in nine. I'm thinking, where did the other eight, ten games come from, or something like that? But we've only just started. So, what people don't realise, when something's written, for young people now who live their life via their phones, via their, I mean, their computers now, aren't they? They live their life. They read this. Everyone reads it. Young people read what is on their phone. It's only older people that can put it down and know what life's like without a bloody mobile phone. Mm. So. All these things can affect these young people. Oh, we've, we've carried on from where they left off and stuff like that. But their attitude on the Sunday, something felt so much better on the Sunday. Almost like we'd pulled the plaster off after that three weeks of that game. And, and they were physically better Sunday. Yeah. I mean, it was quite extraordinary. And they, that's one of the benefits of young people is that physically, obviously, they re recover a little bit quicker. But mentally, we've got to be, you know, we've got to be really supportive of these lads. So, they're doing a lot of sacrificial things to play for Yeovil, and uh, you know, and it's and it's important that we respect that from them because they are really playing for that for, for this football club. They're not doing it for financial gain. I can assure everyone of that. They're doing it because they want to have a, a life in football, um, and and Yeovil's where they've you know where they've been selected to play for. So they're really giving everything. Um, but, but they're, they're fabulous to work with. Hey, they're really fabulous to work with. And um, you know, when we talk about some of the, some of the performances this year, it'll give, them, it'll give them a lot of belief. And Saturday was obviously our best performance thus far. But yeah, what I like about them is they are progressing game by game. Saturday, they may take two steps backwards, but I'm not sure it'll be because of a lack of attitude or willingness, because I don't think they've got that in them this, this lot. I think it will be because of a, an off day if, if it ever comes, you know.
but no, great, great to work with, and the amount, the, the more pitch time we can get with them, the better, and then just roll them out every week. But a bit of a, a bit of a, a harder task, should we say, on Saturday up at Stockport? They're considered to be, I don't know quite why, but because they spent a lot of money, I suppose, one yeah. of the bigger clubs. Um, you know, you, you fancy your chances, I, mean, I presume. Yeah, look, I, I think every game for us is different this year. I think every game is to the previous two years because where are we now in terms of the names on the team sheet? Where are we now in terms of the experience that we used to have that we don't have? You know, when when I used to have team sheets in, managers would look for Rhys Murphy. No, Al Murphy's playing. Charlie Lee's playing. Then they're, they're serious football players and had serious football careers. What we are now, we are very much under the radar. We're not expected. No one, no one expects us. Even the Kings Lynn game, everyone will be, will they, won't they? So the expectation is completely different to last year. <coughs> Maybe it's closer to the first year when I was here, the first, uh, where we'd been relegated. Just a winning season would have been enough. We uh, and obviously we got to the playoffs. But every game we play, home or away, is a huge, huge test for these boys. And every time they go out there. And my, my, one of the biggest parts of my role with this group is making them believe there's nothing to be afraid of. There's lots of things in life to be scared of. Going down the tunnel at Stockport is something not to be afraid of. If there's 8,000 there or 7,000 or 2,000, there's nothing to be afraid of. We've all seen the really worst parts of life, especially at this club, and, um, and, and, and going out and challenging Stockport for three points is not one of the things that they should be who should have anxiety about. So one of my biggest jobs with these young people, these young people that have never really had a home or a club where they're settled, is, is to make them feel like they can and they will. Um, and they they could go and achieve, you know. It's, it's all about being positive with them because that's what you need, don't you? When you're young, you need that. Yeah. You need that pat on the back saying, listen, it's going to be all right. And, you know, even Addy, Joe Quigley, the amount of clubs they've had, Always saying to, I'm always saying to our players, we don't just screw you up and throw you out here. You're, you're part of us. Unless you are one hell of a ding dong of a human being, you're, you're here and we'll work with you. So, I don't, I don't think there's, you know, we've got some good players. Halifax have got some good players. I mean, Summerfield, he's been one of my favourite EFL players as a young coach when I got into the EFL. Summerfield was one of my favourite players at Cheltenham. I thought he was a very good footballer. Woods was a, is a very good footballer. And they've got some good players, Halifax. Matt Warburton, proper footballer. So every team's got good players. Every team's got this or that. And on the day, hopefully it's the post and goes in rather than <laughs> it's the post and goes out. So it'll, it'll be, we'll just, we'll just go there and try and win the game. We won't go there and try and draw the game. We won't try and go there and damage limitation we'll just go there and try and win the game and again it's my job to make these people these young lads these players believe they can go and do it you know there's probably only me and Wilkinson now and now with a three <laughs> by our age <laughs> so and Terry's definitely not got a three by his age he's got a five but um but it's uh it's you know it's a big part of Luke's job as, as their captain their their, their leader a big part of my job as their line manager to make them think they can they can go and do whatever they want in life. Well, best of luck on Saturday. Three points in the bag, obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Darren. So the, a clean sheet, a win on the telly. Is this early signs that this team is beginning to settle? Um, I, I, I think that's ten. That's probably another six, six or seven games in, maybe whether we know it's going to settle. But it was when Sheridan and I spoke before the game. It, it was certainly nice to name the, the same team. Um, it was very nice to do that yeah, in, and, and in a completely different way it would be very nice to have Matthew back from Monday and to have um, Jack Robinson back from, from Monday so all of those things yes being settled but it will be nice to add a couple more ingredients to the, to the mix and have a bit more support in that sense um, but I, I can only tell you as I find it that they've been fabulous to work with brilliant attitude every day Yes, I throw my teddies out of the pram on a regular basis with them, but 
anyone who's got kids out there you know exactly what I'm talking about they do wind me up but uh, listen my, like I said my job's to make them focused and and believe believe they can you know we go back to people feeling comfortable and settled and feeling like they've got some worth to their job uh, we're seeing definitely that in people like Barnett and Wakefield we've, we've not spoke about and um, we need to make them feel like that and uh, the more I can give them that glow that little bit of light and I can keep them fit or they can keep themselves fit shall I say um, you know the better better product we'll have on a Saturday but it, it's been nice to see a progression it's been nice in the three games it's been nice to see a progression and, and like I said if we don't see that progression Saturday that's fine as long as we see the right attitude and the right kind of um, cohesion as, as a team I'll be fine with that and just mention Wakefield after a Halifax game he's saying he's having to work a bit differently this year <laughs> but he's happy to do so when he wants to work hard for the team is that a kind of sign of maturity coming from him? Did you get that from his interview? Because his interview was probably the worst interview I've ever heard <laughs> and the players have really really reminded him of that it was <laughs> it was Joey Essex at his absolute best <laughs> so he um, Ch Charlie Charlie's got some great, really great qualities, really, and we've all seen them. They're very physical qualities. He's super fast. He's a good height. But the biggest change in Charlie, um, from what I saw last year and the previous years, is his change of mentality. And we've had, and we have had to work hard together with that because I keep saying, I keep reminding these lads, not all the managers are wrong. At some point, you have to take responsibility because a manager is employing you to provide a certain set of skills and services. Alongside that, the manager then wants you to to almost um, showcase the the way he wants to be perceived as well as an individual. And the way I want to be perceived as a manager is that when players play for us, they run, they try, they tackle, they kick. I, I want them to do that. Because I, I want my teams to be seen as very robust and aggressive and um, and organised. And Charlie, if Charlie didn't add those elements to his game on top of what he naturally brings, organically brings with his pace and his directness, Charlie doesn't play. It's really simple. Same way we saw Knowles in the early days, f floating around, flighty. Oh, I'll get the ball every now and then. Now Knowles is a he's a serious competitor and um, and we've done well with those types over the years now it's a little bit different when you talk about um, a Jordan Barnett or a Daniel Moss they naturally have that in them but Charlie's had to work really hard and, and, and I'm not very um, complimentary too often with Charlie but he's been fabulous he's been f fabulous in the three games we've played He's been he's been right up there. I thought against all the shot he was our best player by far. Um, but his work for the team, if you notice, there's not many there's not many opportunities coming from down his side at the moment. And that's for a flying winger, you know. So I, I think Wakefield's done brilliant to add to his game, and that's what he's got to do. And the minute he tries to retract or to rewind and go back to being a fluff bag, then he can come and sit with me. But and then, but with Charlie now, Charlie now has a has developed a trust with his teammates where they know he can really dig in and roll his sleeves up. Charlie's now got to make a goal or score a goal. Otherwise, he's just a fullback, isn't he? A winger that doesn't create anything is just a right back, in my opinion, because he's certainly stopping attacks. Now he's got to add that little bit of offensive quality to his game. Um, I liked it Saturday first half. He got one on one with Summerfield and he went on the outside. I want him to shoot. There's times to cross, there's times to shoot. And he's now got to turn that cross come shot. I think it was to Quigley back post, and I think they blocked it on the line. He's got to turn that into a moment of, I'm going to score a goal. And when he does that, you know, then we'll, we'll see a player, you know, realising his potential. But he's been great. Apart from his interview, he's been, <laughs> he's been great. And just funny for me, the news from the Glovers Trust, they believe that they've got two potential groups looking at maybe talking about takeover bids. 
Are you privy to any of those sort of talks? Does that <laughs> bother you at all? Or? <laughs> I'm not privy to anything. Um, I don't. I don't read social media. I've been made aware of, of the statement. Um, it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. All I can say to you is, um, it doesn't help the players. If people think that that helps the players, it doesn't, because the first thing they were talking about when we returned to training on Monday, and especially Tuesday, um, uh, was that was that kind of noise. And then they start thinking, well, what if that happens? And what if that happens? And what if that happens? And you know why they're thinking about all them permutations? Do you know what they're not thinking about? The actual game. Football and winning. So I can't, again, I can't control lots and lots of things. I can control how we train, when we train, how long we train, what we do in training, what shape we play, who goes down the tunnel, who sits next to me, who sits on the coach still. I can control all those things. I can't control these things. And I don't really want to be involved in that. I just, I just, you know, I want to enjoy my football this year. I want to enjoy working with a group of people that are as ambition and, uh, ambitious and as focused as I am. Uh, and, and that's down to the, the business owner. You know, it's, that's, and the business owner right now is Scott Priestnell. And whatever happens, happens. I, I, yeah, I, I, honestly, I try and run away from it all because there's just so many things that are out of my control and I'm a bit of a control freak anyway. And if I tried to get my hands on something like that, then I'd be out of control anyway. <laughs> so, but yeah, certainly, certainly interesting stuff. Lovely, thanks, Aaron. Best luck for that. Cheers.